Today I'm going to paint another one of my photos from Scotland, I think it is, and there's the reference. It's uh, not a very good photo, but that doesn't really matter. What I'm after are some large shapes and something of interest. So we have the mountains in the background, of course, and the midground, not a lot going on. Um, the foreground with a nice little, I don't even know what it is, uh, it doesn't really matter the foliage and I do like rocks so I saw these rocks splitting up the water which I thought was cool and um, so basically we got about four big shapes so that's what I'm really looking for in a photo are uh, the big shapes not the details I don't really care about the details because I can add those and make them up but it's the it's the shape of the painting that's gonna make the biggest difference so as usual I block in the bigger shapes first always uh, the big shapes and then we'll break the shapes up as we go you can tell I'm not too careful about trying to match the photo uh, I try to be loose and paint quickly and so that doesn't really give me opportunity to worry so much about the shapes and the shapes don't really matter um, that much as long as they they look similar um, I think you can probably tell that I used this photo reference if it's next to it, but um, don't try and match the photo reference too much because it's not that important. It just gives you an idea of what to paint. Uh, if you could make this up without the photo reference, then great, but um, most people, and myself included, need somewhere to start, and photo reference is great for that, but don't get bogged down in what the, f the reference looks like. You can see I haven't used the colors whatsoever. Don't worry about the colors. The colors are completely up to you. And I will change them several times. It's probably a bit too green right now. But but again, that's up to me. And uh, I felt like using green. So the photo reference actually is like muddy. Um, I, I remember the, the day it was very gray and kind of rainy. So uh, you're not going to get great colors from lots of photo references. Most of my photo references look fairly dull. Um, from the UK, you're lucky if you get any sun whatsoever. So um, I choose to change the paintings into something slightly sunnier and brighter just because I enjoy oversaturated colors. It's not, um, there's no other reason than I just like saturated colors. But if you don't, then you can keep them realistic if you want it doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent so if you're gonna have duller colors or less saturated colors then make sure you don't have ones that are too saturated because it'll look strange so either go all saturated or all pastel type colors or all muted colors so try not to get confused so you can't really have like if you went fairly realistic then you can't have saturated colors in there so consistency is the most important so once i have the big shapes i start to break up the big shapes into smaller shapes basically and again i'm using the reference just to give me an idea of the overlapping shapes um i'm not really too concerned about trying to match them there's obviously in photos there's a lot of detail and you're going to ignore most of it pretty much ignore almost everything you see other than the big shapes and give you an idea where the sun's coming from. Um, I think this is midday-ish, which is always a difficult time to see where the sun comes from because it's overhead and then, and then the clouds kind of make it diffuse, so it goes sort of everywhere. But I, I've kind of taken it from the left, but the sun isn't so strong, so you can't tell that uh, that easily other than the rocks you can sort of tell it's coming from the left up but for painting purposes just choose a direction and stick to it um left or right and and don't get too fancy about it um uh, I, I just randomly choose most of the time or just where i think the biggest shapes are going to have the nicest highlights so if you have some big shapes make sure the highlights hit that shape so that help you choose but I don't think it really matters. I could have just swapped this around to the uh, sun coming from the right and I would have been fine. 
So again, don't get too caught up in it. You can see me changing the colors now and the value, which is called brightness in Procreate. So changing the brightness is going to change the values. Uh, I like contrasty paintings. Again, that's just my personal style. That's up to you. And I've made the back mountains a lot darker than they really are. And obviously a lot more colorful. But you could you could keep them more realistic if you wanted to. Um, I could paint this painting exactly how it looks, but I think it'd be kind of boring. And if you're really just going to copy the paint, uh, the photo, sorry, you might, might as well just use the photo. Um, so once I get to a reasonable stage and the photo reference isn't really helping me anymore, I make sure to close it and get rid of it. Otherwise, the imagination is difficult and and you really need to not look at it while you're trying to add some more interest. I mean, if you really want to copy the painting, then 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 okay, keep keep it. But I don't really want to copy the painting. I just want it as a starting point. So once I have this starting point, I can, you know, add whatever creative things I want to. And now I'm just really playing around with how I do all of my other paintings. And that's just trying to make it more vibrant and add details and uh, flowers and, and things like that just to make it more fun. That's all I'm really trying to do is make it more fun and and yeah. So we get the border. I always do this border. Um, I'm using clipper mask on every layer so it conforms to the bottom layer and makes it more interesting. There's no reason for this other than I don't like digital paintings to have a straight border because it looks boring to me. And digital is so clean that I want to mess it up. Um, I think I want to mess them up more. So I'm going to see how I can do that. Uh, you might have seen me there quickly. This is um, three times speed. So I can't really do it normal speed because the video would be too long. And I'd be talking forever. So that's why I speed it up. Uh, I don't really edit it. I just cut out a few bits while I'm not doing anything. So it did take me about 30, 40 minutes, this painting. So you, times three, so 10 minutes, uh, you're pretty much there. So add all this kind of noise, pretty noise, if you like, because um, the painting is too neat otherwise. I like it messy. Um, I use gradient map there to change the colors of the rocks. And that always makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, usually I start with black and white rocks, but I generally use the gradient map to give them some color. So mostly now I'm just adding little details, little um, effects, really. I'm putting branches coming from like maybe a tree from the right, and uh, I put a little one on the left. Every time I do a painting, I try to do something a little bit new, and I haven't really done that before. I don't really concern myself with if it works right now. Um, I can always just not do it next thing. I like to put a path in most of my paintings because uh, I like to go hiking and we always see paths and it always gives you an idea of scale and, and where people would be walking to. So once you put something man-made in like a path or uh, signs or um, fences and things like that you can get a sense of how big this place is but if you don't put anything man-made you can't tell how big everything is really so it's a nice little trick to to give you an idea of how big this uh, landscape is uh, one thing i wanted to do here was to make rocks go under the water there's a nice simple trick for that is paint them in whatever color you want Put the water over the top and then drop the opacity of the water, the blue color, and it'll look like it's underneath. Now, once you get the underneath rocks, you can reuse that color all over the place then. And so I'm coming to the end now, so hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give me a subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one.